getting started with Onshape is pretty easy. When you log in for the first time with your new account, you're going to get this Welcome to Onshape video link. Go ahead and watch it. It's, I think, less than a minute. I'm going to go ahead and close it. Know that you're already on your main documents page where you can begin to create things and work. But there's learning resources available as well. And if you click the Learning Center button right here, it's going to open a new tab and take you to the learning area. Inside the learning area, I've already got it open for myself. <clears throat> Inside the learning area, there are courses that you can take. There are instructor-led trainings, which are actually courses that cost money, but there are self-paced courses. And if you click on that, um, what I would recommend when you're ready to start one of these CAD classes is to find the fundamentals, on shape fundamentals CAD. So if you click on that course, this is more of like a playlist of several courses. Um, so navigating on shape, this is going to give you the overview of just the interface um, and some key information about on shape. Introduction to sketching, and there'll be um, little practice sketches that you'll make along the way. Part design using Part Studios. I actually did it, found a different class, um, but it, I'm guessing there's overlap with this one that I did and I had um, actually done this on shape assemblies I just did it in a different place than underneath this CAD fundamental so it doesn't show completed right here but I've done that one as well um, this will be a great place for you to start okay so I recommend you doing that however you may go ahead and just browse around a little bit and tinker with it I feel like sometimes doing that will help you when you're in the learning center have what they're explaining make just a little more sense. I will tell you that one of the first things that took me by surprise is that when you create a document that's not the same as creating a part file. Onshape is different than traditional CAD um, in that you know document I think just for us often implies it's a single document where you're gonna have like a single file like a single part file but it's actually more of like a project file like a folder. They just call it something different. So um, I've done, I started, I, I didn't really complete it and do drawing pages and that kind of thing, but I made some parts for the Puzzle Cube project, but this was actually a document and the name I gave to the document was just the Puzzle Cube project. When I go into that document, okay, there's what's called a part studio and a part studio is where you build your parts. Um, you build more than one part inside that part studio. So this is actually showing the part studio right now, I believe. Yep, there's tabs down below. So when, inside, when you're inside this document, um, there can be different tabs and environments that you're in, but the part studio where you would build parts and the assembly, I think are automatically generated and already there without you having to hit the plus sign and kind of create new elements. So they call those elements. So part studios, assemblies, um, if you hit the little plus sign, you'd be able to see that you can create drawings, folders, etc. So I'm not going to create anything new right now. Um, so inside the part studio, which is different than the assembly, it looks like it's assembled. Um, but this is actually where the parts got built. I can hide or turn on the visibility of each individual part that got created to look at one part at a time. Building parts within the same environment being able to access them, turn them on while you're building another part is what makes this really easy and kind of powerful. Um, we haven't talked about in our course this year parametric modeling, but this is where you're kind of building a part and you're able to reference the geometry in another part at the same time. So that if I were to make edits to one part, potentially I've modeled in a way that it's not modeled so that all these other pieces are just completely independent of a shape and that they are their dimensions are relative to other parts dimensions so just as a quick example I'll modify my blue part and you'll see that um, things will change like let's just change the height of this little notch in the blue part where the orange fits in so if I raise that and make that taller you'd think that well that there's gonna be a gap right 
Well, I went through and modeled in a way. So I'm going to make that one inch. I'm going to accept that sketch. I modeled it in such a way that once I've changed that height, the orange part isn't just its own dimension, but it's, it is actually relative to that. So that's really cool. That's something you'll see and, and hear more about later, but I'm trying to give you just a quick overview. So let me go back to my main documents page. Okay, so if I was ready to start a new project and mess around, I would just come over here to say create and go to document and I'll call this practice demo real quick as you go through the trainings you are going to learn about menus and, and a lot of little things again I'm doing this just to give you how could I jump in and play right now so that when I go through the tutorials I've already got a little bit of familiarity with the product um, I think you'll find that having used Autodesk Inventor, this is in ways there's going to be differences with the interface, but in some ways it's going to feel kind of similar. Um, I'm still using a lot of times sketch based modeling, so I'm going to choose sketch right here and I'm going to choose a work plane to start on, like the front. Now it doesn't automatically become normal to your perspective and there's a keyboard shortcut just to press N and it'll rotate it. I can also use the P shortcut, P on my keyboard, to hide those other planes. I can always hide and unhide other planes by clicking these little eyeballs that appear, but it's nice to hide those, otherwise they're distracting. I'm not going to hit this little green checkbox until I'm done sketching. You'll notice that right up here I have sketch tools that have, once I've gone into a sketch, that have um, become available. So like lines, rectangles, if you see a little arrow next to a tool, that means you've got more options. Um, the on shape tutorials are going to do a good job um, kind of walking through each of these, but I find that, you know, I can figure them out if I just start clicking and playing. So again, um, explore, navigate a little bit, but don't ignore their tutorials either because I have found as I've gone through them that while there's a lot of the basics and things that are obvious, there are a little tip, lots of little tips and tricks that become um, very handy to know and be aware of how they work. So for example, just one, if I'm going to use the line tool, which we're familiar with, and I'm going to start sketching here, if I just do a left click, start moving my mouse, left click to place the line, the line tool is automatically um, expecting me to kind of chain new line segments. And so I just keep left clicking, right? Um, I'm going to hit is it spacebar or escape? I'm going to hit escape. Spacebar does some things too in here just to begin to end. But if I had chosen the line tool and instead of doing a single left click, but I'd click and hold and then drag and make a line segment when I let go, the line tool is still turned on, but it didn't automatically begin the next line at that endpoint. And so I can click and hold and drag and create lines in different places where they are disjointed and that's just a really cool kind of handy tool right so tips and tricks like that are available and um, you'll come across them as you're learning by the tutorials I'm not going to go through all the ones that I have found helpful I'm gonna let you guys find those but I just want you to know that if you don't go watch the tutorials you will miss out on a lot of those things okay um, so let me undo maybe making these little lines real quick and let me just cap this off. When you have a sketch, um, there are tools over here like your dimension tool that you're familiar with that you can dimension. Color coding is a thing. So this was already tied to the origin and um, black means that it's no longer movable. Um, this is very handy. Showing constraints, you can see where we have coincident constraints. That's a coincident constraint symbol. Where we might have vertical, horizontal, or even perpendicular. Creating constraints or deleting constraints is a good thing to know right away. Um, these constraints, if they're visible, you can click on it and you can delete them by hitting the delete key. So this segment is no longer forced to be vertical, in which case they're blue because even though I've got a dimension of two, it didn't have to be vertical and so it's still um, you know, this sketch is not fully constrained. 
if I want to add geometric constraints instead of dimensional constraints, they're right here next to the dimension tool. Again, the little down arrow lets me know there's a lot of other options. And so I can make things equal, perpendicular, all kinds of things. I'm going to go ahead and use the perpendicular tool and make this a right triangle by choosing these two line segments to create the legs of a right triangle. All right. If I hover over that perpendicular constraint, then it shows me what two pieces of geometry are related based on that. And if I right click on it, you'll see that it says delete sketch entity. So while I'm calling it a constraint, you'll see that Onshape has sometimes different vocabulary for their things. So they're calling that a sketch entity. And so I could delete it right there instead of hitting the delete key. And you can see it goes back to being blue again. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and accept it even though it's not fully constrained. Eh, let's fully constrain it, right? We should. And then I'm going to accept the sketch. I've got my view cube like you're used to. I can zoom in and out with my scrolly wheel. Um, holding down the scrolly wheel, I can pan. And holding down the right mouse button, I can kind of do a free orbit. Okay. Um, the edges aren't selectable here like maybe you're used to. It's pretty much faces or corners. Um, but once you've got a sketch, a closed sketch, the fact that it's filled in in gray lets me know that it's filled in, it's closed, and I can begin to use 3D tools. I'm outside the sketch, so you'll see that my tools up here have changed. I'm going to do a basic extrude. I'm going to choose this option, and you'll see that I can create a new extrusion, or it can be at, this extrusion can be adding to a new part. Um, I need to really do a second one to kind of help you understand the difference. So in this case, there was nothing already here, so it's going to be a new, right? And I think if I choose add or new, it really isn't a big difference. Um, let me just go ahead and accept that. So I'm going to go ahead and start sketching. I'm going to sketch on this surface. That'll be my work plane. Sketch a plane. There you go. Um, I'm going to hit N again to be normal to it. And I'm just going to add on. How about a little rectangle? This, this is going to, you'll see that I can reference this stuff, right? So let me just make that. I'm going to accept it. Now, you'll see that I'm inside a part studio and it's listing parts. When I go to extrude, if I have add turned on, and I'm going to switch the direction to that, and let's maybe even change the depth. Okay, because I had add turned on, this extrusion is going to add material and be part of the same part that I just created. So you'll see that I still have only one part. It shows one solid piece. The whole thing highlights if I hover over that. If I hide the part, everything disappears. Instead of having chosen add in the extrude menu, had I chosen new, then that becomes the beginning of a new part. And it was created though, being able to reference a vertex, a corner, and there's all other things you could reference um, and just try to make these relate to each other and that's the parametric modeling. Once you've got those parts over here I've discovered that you can right click and you can give them new names. So this will just be, I don't know, how about triangular prism. And you can also change the color. So if I right click and edit appearance and for right now I'm just going to keep it that simple and you can explore and navigate other things that you can do right there. So if I wanted to change the color of this so that my parts have different colors and they stand out more easily, there you go. So that's the beginning of creating parts. I'm inside a part studio and both parts are right here and they're already kind of related to each other. It is different than the assembly environment though. So there still is this assembly tab and inside the assembly tab you see that I don't have anything yet. So inside an assembly, I would be able to go to insert and begin to choose that. Again, the, the learning center tutorials are going to really give you little tips and tricks about how to do this the right way. Going through all the different mates, it is so much easier than Inventor um, in, in certain ways. So I have found that I really like it a lot as I'm, I've been playing around with it. Okay, um, if you go back here just for maybe a little bit of encouragement. I'll let you see, I've already done the train project in terms of modeling and assembling the parts. So here you go, I've got an assembly and I've even got an exploded view if I can 
remember how to make it show up. There you go. And I found it pretty fun and easy to do. So there's a quick intro to Onshape before maybe you start playing around with, um, or maybe play around on your own a little bit before you go to the Learning Center and watch a tutorial. That's just my own, uh, my own natural way of trying to learn. I like to play around with things a little bit. It gets me, it gets me primed and ready to hear the detail from a teacher.